It's on Facebook, right? Good. Okay. 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 Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to open mic night number two. My name is Ralph Casals, your town manager of the town of Cutler Bay. Um, first, we'd like on behalf of the mayor and town council, thank everyone who's participating tonight in the audience and also on our Facebook Live as well. And first, we also like to have our, our thoughts and prayers to our, the, our friends and the panhandle that are dealing with a category four hurricane that made landfall earlier today. And uh, I think that's an important time today to kind of reflect on your own personal plan. Uh, uh, those folks over there, our friends and neighbors up there, about a week ago, they didn't even know it was gonna be a category four. It, it intensified really quickly. And, and that's something that we, we uh, are gonna be supporting. All the cities in the state of Florida are gonna be supporting. You'll see us posting messages to try to help support different funds and organizations, credible organizations. Uh, that are help our our friends in the and in, in, in the in the panhandle. So with that, open mic night. What is it? I'm not going to do karaoke. This is really an opportunity. Contrary to popular belief, it's not that. Uh, and I don't even have that type of talent. Um, we this is an opportunity for me to provide the, the community an update of what's going on in the town, some of the different hot topics that we have, and more importantly, to hear feedback from you. You, the residents. So we have some folks here in the audience and we have some folks here that are on Facebook Live. And I also like to introduce our team, which is our, our town clerk, Marcia Molino, uh, Rod Gibson, our communications manager. Thank you. I know we have uh, Mayor Mirabouts here in the audience and we have other members of the, of the council that are participating via Facebook. So we're listening, we're checking. This is also being recorded. This was also be rebroadcast as well to provide it as an informational session for the folks who cannot make it here tonight. So with that, let's kind of, I'm going to go over briefly some topics. I'm going to do a little bit different than we've done in the past. We're going to go through different topics. I'll have a little Q&A after each one, but feel free that after the Q&A, if there's a, some type of question that you have in your thought process, let us know. You'll hear a little bell from a uh, little ring from Rod Gibson there. That means that we have a Facebook Live uh, question, and I'll stop and answer that during our question and answer. So briefly, some of the topics that we'd like to discuss, and now... I'm going to put up uh, a nice PowerPoint. Okay, so one of the things that we want to talk about today is the budget workshops and hearing, right? It's that time of year. It's very important. Uh, we're also talking about the trim notice. What is a trim notice? We're also going to talk about upcoming projects in the town. And also, as I like to call it, little hot topics, you know, three and a half acre purchase that we're, we're in the process of purchasing, our 16 acre legacy park municipal complex. So, Folks that have been following us uh, online know that we are very committed to, for transparency. We've had three public workshops, the difference between a workshop and a hearing. The workshops are something that we have instituted here in the town where we provide the opportunity for the council and a public meeting as you as a resident as well to view it online or come to the council chamber. Uh, we had our first budget visiting workshop on June the 28th. We had our second workshop on July the 27th. And more recently, we had our third budget workshop on August the 23rd. So those are three different opportunities that the town council was able to discuss in a public forum, the budget process. And I'd like to thank the mayor and town council because even throughout these meetings, we had in with council members to understand and explain the budget, looking at all, all the different items that we have because it's very important to us. So. What's coming up next? These are what's called the hearings. The hearings are state mandated. There has to be two public hearings. Each municipality or taxing authority has to have two. They cannot occur on the same day as either the school board and or the county. So that's why you see those dates there of September the 12th and also on September the 26th. Both meetings, hearings, will, will take place in the council chamber, the very room that we're in right now, and it will be at six o'clock. That is where we, myself, the town council will present the budget and then try to obtain feedback from the, from the council, from the, from the residents about our fiscal priorities.
Okay, so I want to take a little time just to talk about the trim notice. This looks familiar, so I'm hoping it looks familiar to everybody because this one here is what you should have received already from the property appraiser's office. We blacked out obviously the names here. And I think this one is an example and very key on the top there is an example of property with no special taxing district as well as no community development district. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. We call those CDDs, the community development district. So first thing you'll see in, in, in this PowerPoint is that you see the folio number, the th folio number 36. 36 is the town's identifier. That is our number. We are the 36th municipality. We are the newest, the youngest municipality. Okay. Here, you'll see a lot of items there that talk about Miami-Dade County, public schools, municipal water management, independent districts, voter approved debt payment. Obviously, I wanna focus on the municipal portion of it, right? Because we always hear comments all the time that, wow, we pay all the several thousands of dollars to the town. No, you actually pay what it's there under the municipal line. In this particular fact here, we have this example, this property is appraised at, sorry, assessed assessed at $127,000. Our current millage rate, which was last year's millage rate, 2.8332. So this homeowner here pays $361.34 out of that in total $3,000 tax bill. So next column. So what happens here is that the property appraiser goes out and appraises the property sorry, assesses the property, I keep using that word, assesses the property. So this homeowner went from 127,000 to 132,000 of assessed value. This number here, 2.8419, that is our proposed ceiling millage rate that we are proposing for the council, okay? Remember last year was 2.8332. What's that mean? For every thousand dollars of assessed property value, $2.83, 332, I right, split those pennies up, uh, it, what comes to the town, which equals a 361 last year. And then this year with the increased property value of 132,000 with our proposed ceiling rate of 284, 2.8419 millage rate, this property owner will now be assessed $377 and, sorry, I'm gonna go up the screen here, and 59 cents if we use a ceiling millage rate. What's that mean? Total increase for the entire year, at least for the Cutler Bay portion of it, is $16.25. Below the page, I kind of split the pages up to make it a little bit easier. We, uh, below the page, you'll see there on the top portion of it, you see all the different taxing authorities and their dates of meetings. Looks familiar? Cutler Bay, September 12th, 6 p.m. What we talked about earlier. This is our, our meeting here that we're going to have our public hearing regarding the budget in the council chamber. So very clearly here, and you can see none of those dates fall on the same time as any other taxing authority. Importantly here too, is you'll see here where it says Miami-Dade County solid waste, $545. $545. That is what the homeowners in Cutler Bay pay Miami-Dade County. They are our solid waste department. If this was another municipality, it may be a different number, but this one is, they are our solid waste department, just like Miami-Dade County is our water and sewer department. This solid waste number includes regular pickup for trash, I mean, garbage, trash, and recycling. All right, so. Well, Folio 36, this is an example of property with special taxing districts and with a community development district, CDD. So I wanna show you one without the other, right? So here, looks familiar. We have a property value of $213, 13,000. Then we also have property value of last year, sorry, assessed millage rate was $603. And this year, based on the new assessment, it will be based on the increased property value because this property went from 213 to 221. And our millage rate is gonna go from 2.832 to the proposed ceiling of 2.8419. And 
homeowner will now have to, again, if we continue that, $628.10, which is $24 a year increase. Okay, a little bit of a higher increase than the one I showed before, but also there was a higher increase in the property assessed value as well. Here, I want to show interest to the little item I have here. This particular uh, uh, property is located in Alza Bayshore. They have a special lighting district, okay, that you can see as part of the taxes, $168 a year. That, those funds do not come to the town of Cutler Bay. They actually go to Miami-Dade County Special Taxing District to operate the decorative lighting in that particular neighborhood. Second part here, remember that term CDD? I call it Community Development District, okay? This particular neighborhood or area, when it was created, it was created with a Community Development District. And what, are the community, what does, does the CDD do? They maintain all the common areas. They maintain the guard gate. They maintain the private roads. They maintain the infrastructure. When I say infrastructure is the stormwater system that are located on a private road. This particular homeowner is paying over $2,000 to the CDD. Those funds do not come to the town of Cutler Bay. They are not managed by the town of Cutler Bay. The community development district actually has, if you live in that district, actually has board members that are elected by the homeowners that are living in that area. And they are accountable. They have meetings. And they're accountable just like the town council is accountable to your tax dollars. So this particular, I'm going to go back for a second. This particular owner, when you look at, pays over $6,000 worth of taxes. $6,000. So I get that all the time. Wow, we're paying all this money to the town of Cutler Bay. Well, we look at this example, out of that $6,000, I would say less than 10%, right? If our math is right, $628 of that $6,900 actually comes to the town of Cutler Bay. And worth it, what, what's what we get to share as to provide services to residents. Again, we talked about the line district, we talked about community development district. So I think it's important because a lot of times people get these tax bills and they don't know how to read it. I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. And at this point, if there's any questions from the audience and or online, regarding the, the trim notices, uh, our proposed millage rate, our upcoming hearing dates, our budget process. I also like to add that throughout the budget visioning sessions and the two budget workshops that we have and in our coming uh, budget hearings, we're completely transparent as I reported to the council when I sit up here on, the, on our meetings. The residents have what my department heads have, meaning that you have the budget, and you have what's called the actual worksheets. So you might see a line item, discussion purposes, office supplies, right? And you'll see the breakdown of that account number. And that is our, our commitment to being completely transparent. All of our worksheets and workbooks are ADA compliant. That's our commitment to have it ADA compliant. So as I mentioned to the council, you have what I have and what our department heads have. That is the, the project that we have. So. Again, I just want to see if there's any questions. Uh, Rod, do we have any questions online? No. no questions. Do we have any questions from the audience? If you do, then just come up to the mic. We could hear you. Just for the rest of the audience at home. No. Come on, come on up. You don't have to say your names. Yes. Yes. Um, abbreviation. So when you're talking, when you put in the CDD costs and the guard, that's non ad valorem. So it's kind of just surprised me. I don't have it in front of me yeah. right there. Yeah. The, uh, the millage, right. the whole the, through. So it's, it, it was 10%, but it was actually more because you can't count that CDD. Well, you know, the two, you know. Okay. It's, All right. And and let me let me go back to that slide for a second. If we could, I, mean, I have my, let me, oh, you're clicking it. You see, those are non -actual. Okay, okay, so. The actual so, tax, the municipality tax. So, the, so on this particular case, this particular case that I have up on the screen, right, this particular homeowner, uh, which are the tax bill of $6,900, out of that, and again, I use 10% as a. Well, as a 3,000 of that is. I use, right, I use that as an example. He knew what the CDD was going to be when he bought that house. 
So the percentage is actually the municipality percentage. If we're looking at it as a percentage rate, oh and God, I believe you said ten percent, something to that effect. It's really, you know, higher than right, that. right. Just to, no. I know that stuff because I work. For no, and 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 that's a great question because what I use was I use a quick analogy that it's about ten percent. Not to be confused, our tax rate is not ten percent. Our tax rate is two dollars and eighty three cents per one thousand of a, of assessed value. Our millage rate. Our millage rate. But again, this is just we get something common all the time that you know you, you get stopped at Publix and somebody will say, "Hey, you know, I'm paying this much taxes." You know, if I just want to expl explain it. Right. Well, that, that was just my observation. It wasn't really a question. I just <clears throat> and it's, I learned something today. Though. I'm glad you learned it because you know, for us, this is our second nature. But again, you know, it's like in your field, you bring me a pharmaceutical drug. I'm like, what is this? You know, what do all these letters mean, right? For, that's why I want to take a little bit of time and explain this because a lot of times people just are afraid or don't know who to ask. And and we're here to answer those questions. Yeah, actually, at the property appraisal right now, it's still in the middle of the Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions regarding the trim notes before we move on to the next topic? Nope. Oh, this is a shy group, huh? Okay, well, we'll, 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 get the, we'll get the juices flowing here, you know, pretty soon. Okay, so let's go to the, we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so we finished that. Okay, so let's talk about some upcoming projects. So the American Rescue Plan, this is something that also our commitment as town administration and town council is to be completely transparent. So we had this item called COVID, right, in the last couple of years. And part of the American Rescue Plan that was approved by the federal government was providing funding, which is a grant. Okay, when I say a grant, I say that specifically because um, municipalities can refuse not to have to take the money or they could accept the money, but play by the rules and federal regulations and comply with those regulations. So in Cutler Bay, we received $21 million. You'll hear me say ARPA instead of saying American Rescue Plan, right? So government, we always use acronyms, right? So when we received the $21 million, part of the federal government um, process was to say, we're gonna offer all the cities, this is every city in the United States, every county in the United States, every school district in the United States, okay? Receive this American Rescue Plan recovery to recover from the, the pandemic. In order to expedite some of the, the, the spending, the original intention for the American Rescue Plan was threefold, water, sewer, broadband, and then later through the, through the National League of Cities and the Mayor's Coalition, the federal government changed it to what's called water quality improvement projects. In Cutler Bay terms, that's called storm water. Okay, so let's discuss the water, as I mentioned before, Miami-Dade County water sewer department. We don't have a water department. The sewer, Miami County water department, sewer department. Broadband, we made the decision not to have a bunch of poles throughout the town providing Wi-Fi, right? I think there's enough technology and the prices come down with that. And then the fourth thing that obviously certainly caught our attention was the water quality improvement stormwater. As you know, we're very committed to our stormwater utility system and, and our, and our, and our uh, uh, further reduction of the pollutants to Biscayne Bay. Okay, as you know, you know, the mayor's on both Biscayne Bay State Commission and also the Watershed Commission for the Miami-Dade County as well. So we take our pollutants very seriously, especially when it comes to Biscayne Bay, because that is the economic engine for Miami-Dade County. So in order to expedite some of these projects, the federal government said, you know what? Anybody who received more than $10 million in allocation can use a one-time offer to what's called general services to be used outside of those categories that I just mentioned. So we took that offer because there's some other needs that we have besides stormwater. We took that offer, we said, okay, you know what? Here it is, 21 million, 10 million for general services, $11 million committed to our water quality improvement. Don't call me stormwater projects. 10 million, okay. So what did we do with our 10 million? And this is something I reviewed with the town council uh, if you recall from our first presentation, we had what's called a budget visioning session, you know, early on. And the first budget visioning session, we discussed what we've done with the $10 million. 
First thing we did was we commissioned a study at Cutler Ridge Park for our pool. We did a pool assessment study. These are eligible expenses under the ARPA funds. We commissioned a study for, for that, and we'll get back to that in a second. We also commissioned the design for retrofitting our sports lights at Lakes by the Bay and Bel Air Parks to be LED, more energy efficient, and more direct lighting. We also commissioned a plans to repair, replace the park services, park playground surfaces at Lakes by the Bay, Bel Air, and Saga Bay Parks, as stated there. And you can see uh, the resolution number. What that means is that that item came before the town council. The town council, more importantly, myself and the town attorney concur. The town attorney said this was a legal expense based on the ARPA requirements, those federal requirements, and the town council voted for that. That's that resolution number. And then you have the amount and they have the vendor. Next, we did townwide sidewalk replacement projects, over $800,000 for sidewalk replacement projects throughout the town. Another eligible expense in that general services category. And then another item that we know we received a lot of feedback in our social media and emails from our, our pool patrons was the replacement of our pool and water chiller. It's a heater and a chiller, very unique to the pools because you either have a heater, but not a chiller. So our, our pool, it, although it's old, we know that this pool chiller was replaced and it can be transferred over to the new pool we're gonna talk about shortly. And then lastly, we had uh, the field improvements for the issuance of the contract for the retrofitting of the Lakes by the Bay and Bel Air Park. So we pay for the design, and we pay for the replacement of it. Okay, water quality improvements portion of it. That's the $11 million that we talked about here. So water quality improvement projects, we have over $11 million that we've committed. We've already have under the design phase over $1.2 million. We have to design the projects first. So what we did was uh, we uh, looked at our stormwater master plan that we had, and we literally said, you know what, what are all the pending projects that we have prioritized in stormwater master plan? And let's go ahead and complete those. Not only that, the funding also allows for us to update the stormwater master plan, meaning guys, I didn't have any more projects. So we had to update the stormwater master plan because the original stormwater master plan did not cover the entire town. So now it's time to do phase two. So that was eligible. So here, a little interactive map of if you live in these neighborhoods, these are the neighborhoods that we have been prioritized in the stormwater mass plan. So as you can see there, we call that the Bell Air Basin. You're going to hear some weird names. That's the technical basin name for it. Just like if you say I live in the subdivision of blank, like in a plat a book. So we have that area there just north of our Cutler Ridge Park there and, and around that area. We have another Bell Air Basin there, which is right off of 87th Avenue and 184, the, the neighborhood right over there. We have also part of the Bel Air project, Bel Air Basin is 82nd Avenue from 184 to Old Cutler Road. Okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's all part of the same sub basin. And then we also have uh, a neighborhood over here right off of 184 and Old Cutler Road. Um, neighborhood name comes to, uh, to uh, I, my mind draws a blank to it, but that's that neighborhood there. Then we have what's called Cutler Ridge Pine. That's the area just uh, right around Frangio Park in that area there. <clears throat> then we have J Twin Villas. That's the area right across the street from Encompass South. There's a, uh, those roads there, right full color. Then we also have the Lakes by the Bay sub basin. That is the area there just uh, um, right around north of 216 and south of 216. In, the, in, in that neighborhood there. The Saga Bay sub-basin, as you can see, there's a large part of the neighborhoods there. And, and we know, obviously, when we had the major floods, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, everybody targeted on Saga Bay. But if you look through that journey of all the red lines there, and if you live in those neighborhoods, you could probably also raise your hand and say, hey, we were also impacted and flooded too. All right, so so it's no coincidence, you know. I mean, it was part of our master plan, and now we have the funding mechanism to start to design. So these areas here are currently under design by our engineering firms. 
that have been awarded the contract due to engineering designs. And then once the designs are completed and then it goes through the permitting process, then you'll see me come back to the town council to request the item to be bid out. We call it RFP or ITB invitation to bid and then award the contract to the contractor. So these neighborhoods right now are the ones that have been targeted for the water quality improvement projects. Now we're gonna go into roadway improvements. Funding sources here are what's called the Miami-Dade Joint Participation Agreement. That is a uh, funds that we receive through Miami-Dade County. And then we also have what's called FDOT, Florida Department of Transportation, LAP, lo uh, Local Agreement Project, I think I wanna say, but it's a, we call it LAP TAP grants from FDOT. It's a grant from, from DOT. And then we also have what's called uh, Towns People's Transportation Plan. That's the half penny gas tax that everybody pays and their allocation based on our population. And then we also have the stormwater utility fund that we have. So here we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna go through the little journey of all the different neighborhoods that are being impacted next year. First one is Marlin Road. We have what's called the Complete Streets Capacity Improvement Project. I highlighted during that box, we received over a million dollars worth of grants to design that roadway. What's a Complete Streets? Curbing Boulevard, Oak Cutler Road. Bus pull-out bays, lighting, drainage, sidewalks, um, shared use paths for bikes as well. That's what's called complete streets. So we received a million dollars of grants for that, combined grants. Franjo Road, another complete streets uh, project, which that one is ahead of schedule than Marlin Road, because that one we've been in the design phase for over a year and a half. And in fact, on during the September 20th council meeting, is when you'll see the process of the town council authorizing via resolution the issuance of the bid documents for the for the construction of it. So this one here, we received $8.9 million from the county for Franjo Road for the construction of it. The design of it uh, also was part of that of that funding source as well. So so far, no abnormal taxes for these projects you know, going back to what we just talked about, right? These are all part of some grants. i like to take a, a moment here for, for two factors. The Franja Road, that was an item that was uh, awarded to us when it was then Commissioner Levine Cava for District 8. That was our commissioner that, that we worked on the deal with. So I'd like to publicly thank her for that. Yes, it does take three or four years to go through the, the planning side, right? Part two, I also like to thank through the hard work uh, with, I know that our mayor and our federal lobbyists, Mayor Mayor, but our federal lobbyists with Congresswoman Maria Salazar. We received a million dollars for design. What you don't see on the screen yet is that we also received $4 million towards the construction of it as well through a federal appropriation as well. So I'd like to publicly thank. So look at those grants that appropriation that we received that does not include any type of town funding at all. So I wanna take that point of personal privilege to talk about those two projects there because those are major roadways within our town. We already did Oak Cutler Road. We already completed Career and Boulevard. So think about all the different roads that we have completed since our incorporation. Now, in this neighborhood here, we have what's called the roadway research and sidewalk improvements. This is part of our, our half penny gas tax and that's where your funding goes to re redo the roadways where they come in that kind of what's called mill and resurface. But more importantly, they put in, replace all the broken sidewalks and they also put in crosswalks and also what's called the ADA detectable device at the intersections as well. That is part of what your half penny gas tax, how we allocate those funds. Second part of that, part two, is the same thing in this neighborhood here, just between, uh, I wanna say that's Caribbean, and I want to say Martinique, uh, but but again, if I'm mistaken, those are, and then you have the little area there with the streets of you know Puerto Rico, right off of One Twelfth Avenue there, and those areas too are going to be for what's called roadway milling projects as well. Folks that live at the end of the footbridge, Southwest Two Hundred Street and Southwest One Third Avenue, there's a little footbridge there. That intersection was identified as a priority area to install a traffic calming circle. We also have a project there. Again, highlighted $362,000 FDOT grant to construct a traffic circle at the footbridge there, as well as you know, drainage in that area as well. 
folks that live off of C100B Canal, which is the canal that is right between Frangio Road and 184 there, uh, we received, again, uh, a $750,000 Florida Department of Environmental Protection, FDEP, government, we just look using acronyms, FDEP grant, and the town is going to be matching 750000 of it from the Stormwater Utility Fund. So here, another, another example of, of us working closely with our state legislatures, particularly Representative Alina Garcia and also uh, State Senator Alexis Kalatayud, our state lobbyists. And every once in a while you hear say, we just came back from Tallahassee. And this is why we go to Tallahassee to show and compete with these things here. In fact, funny, funny story. <laughs> I know the mayor's here is going to laugh. When we went to FDEP in Tallahassee, we went to go meet, you know, the, the secretary, but he couldn't meet. It was the assistant secretary of the EP. And we just went up there and we just said, thank you. We go, what do you guys need? And so we just said, you know, we just want to say, you know, thank you for helping us and funding us. So it's very rare that they hear that. So we have a great working relationship with, with the folks from DEP. That's a good example of it. And it's very, very, those grants are very, very competitive. Uh, um, they usually go to like the, the fourth decimal point, you know, in terms of points. So we're very proud of that. Also, we have what's going on right now is the Whispering Pines Park roadway and drainage improvement. That is uh, $583,000 from the town's PTP half penny gas tax that we have. That's currently under construction. It should be completed here in the next maybe 60 days. Um, so I know there's a lot of people that are just, I know it's been inconvenienced that we close the park. We want to close the park for safety reasons. But when it's all done, said and done, it's going to have a brand new fence around the park. It's going to be drainage along that uh, 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 sidewalk there, new sidewalks and, and roadway resurfacing. Caribbean Boulevard, we call that internally the J, kind of looks like a J, right? So we call it the J. The Caribbean Boulevard, Boulevard between 87th Avenue and 184, that is another roadway that we're going to complete the rest of the complete street projects, right? To make it match like the rest of the Caribbean Boulevard. As you know, that section there is missing a lot of sidewalks, no lighting, no curbing, no drainage, similar to the, what the rest of Caribbean Boulevard looks like. This one here, again, a $1 million FDOT grant to fund that project to, com to then complete the complete streets project for Caribbean Boulevard. 82nd Avenue looks familiar because that was in our last chart from the ARPA, right? Here, I put this here because it's a combo project. We received $800,000 grant from DOT for 82nd Avenue, drainage, traffic circles, sidewalk improvements. But we're also using ARPA funds as well. So this is what I call a combo project. So there's two different granting sources that are gonna, that are gonna fund that entire project. Planning phase, our eight and a half acre town property, which is on the corner of 184 and Old Cutler Road. That is a property, it's eight and a half acres. If you recall our journey, we purchased that property a couple of years ago, approximately $1 million per acre to avoid the construction of 29 homes. I call them McMansions, but homes, right? So we bought that property. We heard the residents. We bought that property. We closed the deal. Um, and then not only that, we also then received $250,000 from Miami-Dade County. Again, someone that worked with us really closely is Commissioner Cohen Higgins. Uh, for appropriation of that of those funds to do the, the master planning of that project. But wait, there's more. So that's the planning phase. The second part is, as our trap to Tallahassee, and as I mentioned, our state representative Garcia, our state senator Alexis Kalatayu, our state lobbying team, we secured an additional $250,000 from FDEP, same folks that we said we didn't go business to say thank you, and we're matching $250,000. So just in this project, we have $250,000 for the planning, and we have $500,000 for the removal of the invasives that is there. And I've been on that site there, you know, just, I would say like maybe close to 90% of all invasive, all invasive trees there. There's some debris there from Andrew as well. Um, and, and none of that stuff is gonna start until we complete the planning phase. So, the worst thing I wanted to do as a town manager is sit there and start having that item cleared out without having a plan. We've got to make sure we have a plan so that we have the community buy-in. 
because if not, then it starts the rumors that there's going to be a blank building there or what have you. That is town-owned property that has been changed in our in our our comp plan to show that environmental property as well. It's an environmental property. It's a park environmental. No baseball fields, no soccer fields, you know, no basketball courts. It's just basically a passive park environmental. But we're going to go through the planning phase. That's really exciting for us because we've been working on that property for such a long time. Right down the same path on 224 and 97th Avenue is a 53-acre parcel there that is owned by South Florida Water Management District. And we also received a grant for $700,000 from FDEP. Sounds familiar now, right? So now you see why we went up there and said thank you. You know, so it sounds familiar and very competitive grant. This property is 53 acres. It's called a mitigation property. That property was mitigated when Lennar built the Isles of Bayshore and Lakes by the Bay. It was owned by the CDD. Sounds familiar, that name, CDD. And then we worked for years to have that transferred, that 53 acres transferred to South Florida Water Management District. So now the government owns it. South Florida Water Management District owns it. Another taxing authority, right, that you saw in the trim notice. What we did there was we're in partnership with South Florida Water Management, as well as, um, if you've been following us, some of our folks in our Parks and Recreation Department, we call this jokingly the 10-year project because it was 10 years ago we started talking about this conversation. Yes, we received the money from, from uh, DEP 700. Yes, we're gonna be matching 700,000, so it's gonna be $1.4 million on South Florida Water Management District property. The benefit is gonna be countywide. And still, part two of this is that we're also working diligently with South Florida Water Management's uh, executive director to see if we could have that property transferred to the town. Okay, because I mean, I'll get those comments, wait, but you're building something on, or you're doing a restoration on somebody else's backyard. Yeah, but we all enjoy that backyard. You know, any given Saturday or Sunday, you can see people out there, you know, with their, with their cameras and what have you. So that's something that we're working on as well. So again, called the 10 year project. Just, and then if you, if you know that area down there, just south of that area, there's a $37 million CERT project, Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Project, that we were fortunate enough to have a groundbreaking. That was probably on the 15-year project, you know, that we, that we finally had the Army Corps doing. That is $37 million restoration project. There's going to be a canal going underneath 97th Avenue, a canal going underneath 87th Avenue. There's going to be some park amenities there. And what the purpose of that project is, is to hydrate all the wetlands that are just north of um, Black Point Marina. It's about 500 acres there. So that's a that's another benefit within the town. That's it's being funded by the federal government. Broken ground. So if you haven't been by it, go see it. What I like about it is that there's tons and tons of acres that they're removing invasive trees along 232 Street between 97th Avenue and 87th Avenue. Just to kind of picture that and 232. That entire area there, there's, it was full of invasive trees. And part of their project is to remove all that. They're also going to be putting in a observation deck. To look at to look out at the 53 acres restrooms park facilities and pavilion as well as a little bike path along the the canal area there so we're really excited how all that started to come together there so as you can see when i put all those projects to collectively together in a map we're going to be very busy you can see all the different neighborhoods that we've impacted recap the funding sources we got the american rescue plan we have FDOT grants. We have Miami-Dade County Joint Participation Agreement. We have the Towns People Transportation Plan, we call the half penny gas tax. And then we also have our, our town stormwater utility fund. Interesting here, zero ad valorem. Okay, so we're doing this all with different types of, of grants as well as our stormwater utility fund. That is very unique. When you have a municipality doing, particularly when there's no commitment to Avalon taxes there. So that's something that's a tribute to the leadership of the Maritime Council and also our, our state and federal representatives that we have. So with that, if there are any you know questions regarding that, you know, please let me see if uh, Rod, are there any online? We have two questions online, but more general topics. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take the general topics. Let's go. I'm sure people are tired of hearing me. 
So is there anything we can do to address the smell of the landfill? If we cannot do anything about the smell, how is Cutter Bay zoned differently than other residential areas? If we are zoned the same, we should get the same rights to clean air. Can we take steps to improve this somehow? Okay. Okay, so we get that question every, every once in a while. The the question, in case you didn't hear, was the um, you know what can we do with the, from the the odors coming from the the South Bay landfill? Well, if you've been by there, they actually have what's called misters there. You know, now how often do they work? You know, we we know that we we get those calls all the time, and we refer them. First thing we do is refer them to three one one, because three one one will then document those calls and they will route that to Miami County Solid Waste Department. They do have misters there. They have to comply uh, with with air quality controls. So when you when you have those type of complaints, I tell folks, thank you, but I want you to call as well. You know, three hundred one because they document that and and they go through that process uh, because that is a county facility and we also monitor that as well. Next question. Yeah, second question is from Dan. Uh, also, he says anything we can do to address the local homeless population, maybe a local sh shelter or center. Okay, so the question was, what can we do to, for the local homeless population, right? Well, I could tell you it's it's a very important topic to the town. In fact, uh, uh, Mayor Mirabout hosts a what's called the South Bay Mayor's Coalition, the very same room that we make up of, of mayors from South Miami all the way to Florida City. And one of the topics of discussion was, that we haven't talked about, was the, the $300 million bus rapid transit project that's going on, right? $100 million from the state of Florida, $100 million from the federal government, and $100 million from the county. In this very same room, we had the homeless trust director here, as well as all the different mayors and, and town managers to try to figure out what we could do in terms of a plan to start cleaning up that corridor. Now, I'm sure people online say, yeah, we know about that corridor, but what about Ocala Road? I'm going to get to Ocala Road in a second. But I want to make sure that it, we draw the attention of the, of the homeless trust. Um, looking at different ways, there's gonna be follow-up meetings because the worst thing we wanted to happen is that you have this $300 million, we call it, you know, shiny toy, and nobody's gonna use it, right? So there's a way these folks, and our police department does a great job. We have what's called the Neighborhood Resource Unit, NRU. Folks, our police officers know some of these folks first name basis. The help is there, they don't want the help, a lot of mental issues there. So again, as local government, we're not equipped for that, right? we have what's called the homeless trust for that. So we're reaching out to them to see if they could come in and even have a satellite office down south. It's not just a common issue in Cutler Bay. From Pinecrest, we've heard, all the way down to Homestead and Florida City, we've had those roundtable discussions. Those, those uh, discussions will continue. It's not just a one-off, that's it. We're going to continue that so that we're going to keep that pressure, applying that pressure to the homeless trust. Part two is that Another, another issue we've been having through our NRU and we've working with our own public works part NRU is along the O'Cutler Road corridor, okay? We have some folks that are just like setting camp at our bus shelters and our bus benches. And, and we've been addressing that as well as some areas underneath the turnpike, as well as some areas underneath the US-1, the pet boy bridges and what have you. So we have been aggressively working combination with our own public works department and our NRU officers to go through and, and start trying to, you know, clean up those and try to urge those people to get some help as they need to. So that's something that's near and dear to our hearts. So we're going to continue doing that. And I think we have a, at least a good plan going forward. Uh, third question is, are there three one one hotline metrics revisited each year or quarter? We plan to improve. The smell is seasonal. Okay. So again, I think that's something that as we have regular meetings with our county commissioners, we're very fortunate to have two county commissioners that, that care about you know, the town of Cutler Bay and our residents. We have Commissioner Cohen Higgins from District 8, and we also have Commissioner Keone McGee from District 9. So we're one of those cities that have two county commissioners. And I think as we meet with them, that's something that we'll bring up in the topic and request those records, see how they could address those, address those needs as well for the 311. Because I know I get the same type of complaints. I know that's not a question, but we get the same type of complaints about what's going on with the mosquitoes, right? That's a service that's done by Miami-Dade County. We tell people, please call 311 and tell your friends, friends and neighbors to call because that's how they target, you know, where to go spray, target spraying. So again, that's something we work closely with Miami-Dade County and we have a great work relationship with, with the both county commissioners as well as, you know, Mayor Levine Cabo, who used to be our county commissioner. Any other questions, Rhonda? Okay. okay, well, I don't know if there's any questions from the audience. 
Oh, we're going to, yeah, come on up, come on up, so we can hear you, so we can hear you. I can hear you, but I want the folks at home to hear you. Fire in Doral, it's a lot of waste being shipped up here. So there are rumors that the Mount Trash Board be coming full. They actually had that at the building moratorium building because there's no place to put it. Okay, so as we call it, the locals call it Mount Trashmore, right? We call it the hill, right? And you know the hill. Um, first, the uh, the solid waste department, as we mentioned in the trim notice, that's that is a service that's provided by Miami-Dade County. That facility is owned by Miami-Dade County. Two things going on. So anytime you open up a landfill, I know enough to be dangerous, right? But it's not our department. They have requirements, a certain height requirements that they have to meet. Once that height requirements meet, they go to what's called the next cell, you know, the next cell. So um, has there been talk about expansion? Yes. Have we also been monitoring some of the legislation that's going on in the Miami-Dade County regarding the recycling program? Yes. We've been in contact, the, the mayor and I have been in contact with uh, Mayor Levine Cava's office and our county commissioner's office regarding expressing some of our concerns if the county wants to consider to reduce or eliminate the residential recycling program, because all that is going to end up where what we refer to Mount Trashmore, the hill, which means it's going to take a more useful life, right? If you recall, when we were growing up, you were always taught, hey, go to go to recycle, recycle, going to put that in the regular bin, right? So, so that's something that's near and near to our heart. And we're going to, again, we're getting all the data and information from the county regarding the recycling program. But again, Yes, that is an issue that's being taken up by the Board of County Commission. I think it's going to be the next couple of meetings because they did have their waste to energy plant in Doral, you know, that was burnt down. And, and they're looking at, looking at the life expectancy of different uh, hills that they have, as I call it, right? There's a couple of hills. There's one in Medley, there's one here, and there's one in North Dade as well. So um, that's something that we're going to continue monitoring because they are our garbage department. Even though they don't report directly to the town, we are your advocates as, as you know, town staff and, and elected officials. So I know it's a, a long question, but there are 13 county commissioners and Mayor Cava that are studying that area, and we continue to monitor it closely as well. Any other? Good. Okay, well, let's, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Great questions. Oh, wait, we got one more. Hold on. Yes, sir, come on up. I was... Uh... You may just that time to ask about the progress with the property at uh, Old Cutler Road and uh, 87th Avenue. Are you looking at my PowerPoint? <laughs> oh, sorry, man. Get back in the chair now. <laughs> <laughs> so are you looking at my PowerPoint? That's the next topic. You're reading, you're reading my mind. You're reading my mind. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, there you go, look, there you go, right up your alley, hot topics. There you go, hot topics, possible purchase three and a half acres located on Southwest 87th Avenue and Old Color Road, which is a great segue for that. So I couldn't know how to plan that better. So thank you for giving me that good segue. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about it in a second. Okay, so let me just give you a general location because I mean, again, we know it's like the back of our hand, but again, just for folks, this property is located on the intersection of Old Cutler Road and 87th Avenue. It's approximately 3.5 acres. Okay, there's 87th Avenue, Old Cutler Road, and you have the traffic circle, right? So we see there. I always tell people where well, there's still the pumpkin patch and the Christmas trees, right? All right. So people, oh yeah, I know where it's at. Okay. So what what have we done there? Okay, I'm gonna. As you recall, about I want to say almost two months ago. We did a public service announcement with Mayor, with Mayor Mirabot. Thank you, Mayor, you know, for a uh, public service announcement. What we try to do is be very, very transparent. Where the mayor mentioned, folks, we have a developer that has development rights by code, by law. They could develop up to 109 units in the Christmas tree pumpkin patch lot. Okay. Now, what we did was we said, okay, well, if you recall the property, this history of this property, for years, the property owner has two times at least to come in to put in a CVS, put a drive through with mixed use development, meaning apartments. So twice the council, uh, previous councils have denied that request. Go back to the drawing board. 
right? He's just kind of trying to make something fit that didn't fit, you know, to the criteria and standards that the, the count, town council just didn't want. Um, after several meetings, as I say, or maybe I say, you know, cafecitos and pastelitos, right, that I need, that I don't need, uh, I was able to uh, um, talk to and convince the property owner to sell the property to the town. So we went through a couple of appraisal processes. We did two appraisals, okay? Uh, at the end of the purchase, there'll be public record. So there are two appraisals that, that we went through and we were able to agree on a purchase price of $8.5 million, $8.5 million, okay? For that, for that property. We, are, we have a contract that was signed. The town council authorized me to negotiate and sign the contract. Um, and then if you recall, in our one of our three budget workshops that we just recently had, our third budget workshop, we had our financial advisor, I call it FA, again, another acronym in government. Our financial advisor, Lourdes Alberting, came before this in the very same room, addressed the town council, uh, saying, okay, you signed a contract for eight and a half million, how are we gonna pay for it, right? Can we afford it? That was the first match from there. We're gonna, we're gonna first close the deal, and let's see if we could afford it. And then obviously we're going through what's called the environmental phase one and phase two, because as you know, part of that property is a nursery. So we wanna make sure there's do our due diligence, okay? So contract's been signed, eight and a half million. Phase one and phase two, I call it the environmental is taking place as we speak. Three, about, I wanna say two or three weeks ago, right? Two or three weeks ago, during our third budget workshop, the, our, our financial advisor came and told the council that, can we afford it? Yes, here's a formula how to afford it, what we're looking for. And again, everything you can see, it's online, transparent. As we mentioned, her PowerPoint presentation was online, recorded a video. We're gonna be seeking a 20 year loan. We call it bond, but it's a bond in government, it's a loan, okay? Not to be confused with a general obligation bond, just a regular bond. We're gonna seek for, we're gonna, we're gonna get quotes from banks for a 20 year, uh, loan with um, no prepayment penalties after five years. I'm going to get back to that in a second. So our our intent there was, we know there's going to be a lot of different development coming up and our success record with different grants that we have received. So we said, you know what, let's get a loan. It might be a little bit higher interest rate than, than a 20-year loan with prepayment penalties, but we want to have one with no prepayment penalties after year five because if we uh, uh, successfully to obtain grants, just like your credit card bill, hey, you know what? I'm gonna pay it off and save that interest and not have a penalty. And that's what our financial advisor, you know, uh, discussed with the town council. Roundabout figures, and again, it's, it's there in the presentation, it's approximately about $480,000 a year, okay, the loan. Okay, again, if we receive prepayments, if we receive grants, that's great. A lot of things that we're talking, we're gonna talk about later about upcoming developments. Anytime there's a new development coming in, as we know, the Southland Mall is gonna be redeveloped. There's other projects that are being developed. All those residential units will have to pay what's called the park impact fee that goes into the park impact fee account. What's that mean is what is the impact of, what's the impact of those residents coming in in our park system? Well, guess what? we're gaining another three and a half, you know, acres of park, as I call it, right? So some people ask me already, well, what are we going to do with the property? Well, I can tell you what, it's not going to be 109 units. It'll go through the master planning phase, but you know what? It's not going to be 109 units, as, as the mayor said, as public service now. So, so that's the latest on, on that property there. So again, that's something that, you know, I'd like to thank the mayor and council because they, we've been working on this for years and previous council members as well, previous councils as well. So that's how long we've been working on this. So I think it's like maybe three council members ago that we've been working on this project. So I think it's important for us that we, we were able to do that. And now think about our journey. We have this three and a half acres. We have the eight and a half acres that we talked about on Oak Cutler. And then we're gonna talk now about the 16 acres. Well, if I do my math right, I think it's like 26 acres within the last three years that we purchased on Oak Cutler Road. Again, Avoid development. We're gonna talk about this one here that's on the screen. We know it was gonna be 109 units. We talked about the one acres, it was gonna be 29 units. And then the one we're gonna talk about now is our 16 acre legacy park, which is a, was gonna be approximately 468 units. All those have been eliminated. 
because the purchase and the confidence that the res has given us and the fact that we could afford it. So our virtual journey through our 16 acres legacy park project, right? We have the new Publix right next door, just to give you a landmark. It's 16 acres and you have Old Cutler Road there. I call it the traffic, to, the traffic circle to nowhere for now, as I call it, right? You know, because I remember when we first built this road back forward, hey, who built this circle? It's coming, guys, it's coming. So we continue our commitment, it's 16 acres. So here what you see on the graphic on the screen is four acres is gonna be town hall, police department, parking garage, pool, community center. And then our commitment to remain 12 acres of it will remain open space, recreation area. So there's the balance. I wanna show this graphic. So hey, it's only four for programming as I call it, and then 12 for uh, open space recreation to, for everybody to enjoy. Now I know I can't even see this, but this is our master plan that was approved by the town council. Okay, and again, this PowerPoint is going to be posted up on 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 our website, um, and you can see that there's about 28 different type of features that are highlighted there, and we're going to go through those in a second. Okay, we're not going to go through each one, but you, as you can see there, again, the programming there, you can see obviously what you see there is a four acres of buildings, and then you have the 12 acres of recreation. What you see there, in the, kind of like the teal, is a water feature. You know, I call it almost like the Lazy River Lake, right? So this is a little close-up look here for, for the folks like me, right? First thing I want to highlight is our commitment from the general obligation bond. This building that I highlighted is a community center, okay? There's a community center there. There's going to be a community center that's adjacent to our pool, okay? So remember that report I said in the beginning that we did a pool assessment, you know, for Cutler Bridge Pool? It just said the things that we know. It's old, it's not worth saving. You can read the rest of 38 pages on your own. That's what it says, right? But we know that it was old and not worth saving, but we made enough repairs because we know this is not gonna be built overnight. That's why you see that $64,000 for the pool water heater that we invested because we needed to invest that now and we know that it could be relocated to this location here. Okay, so number 11 here, which is a, part, which is a pool. Remember the ARPA funds that we talked about, the $10 million there? We're gonna, we committed already $6 million and some change to fund this project, which is not coming out of the general obligation bond. The general obligation bond that was voted upon by the residents was $37 million. We're putting in $6 million from another funding source. So we haven't, so that's gonna be total project of $42 million. But what the residents are gonna be repaying, repaying back through a general obligation bond ad valorem tax will only be the 37. So that's another way that we were able to leverage our opera funding. This building here is gonna to be town hall. Again, based on some of the, the surveys that we received and the comments, we wanna put that nice and close to Oak Cutler Road. Building next to it will be the police department. As you can see there, you see like a little entrance from uh, 212 Street there for in and out for for the police uh, department. So I mean, yes, unfortunately they have some customers that they had to bring into the back door, not the front door. So that's what you see there in the Sally port. Most importantly too, number nine is a 300 car parking garage. 300 car parking garage. So a lot of people say, why so big? I said, well, you know what? Have you, if you've ever been to one of our events in Cutler Ridge Park, where all those people park, right? This is gonna be the, this is gonna be the place for them to park. It's going to be three stories. It's going to be three stories. Our code says it's up to three stories. We're also going to have what's called a band shell stage there as well. Okay, overlooking a seating area there, overlooking the lawn. As you know, we use the Color Ridge Park, the Mike Vaughn Field as our special events. That's approximately like five acres. And every time we see a stage there, we have to rent it. So this one here, we were committed to go ahead and put in a uh, an amphitheater stage, we haven't figured out the design yet, but this layout you see here, this layout you see here is how it's gonna look. Now, the architecture side of it, we're negotiating with the architects as we speak to look at what the designs are gonna be and we'll have meetings with for that as well. So if you follow us, you know, please keep track of what we're doing. And... <laughs> But again, that, that layout's gonna stay the same. That's gonna be the, the layout. Community center, pool, 
town hall, police department, park and garage, amphitheater, and then the rest are gonna be public park amenities throughout. This is just some of the renderings of what the entrance may look like. Again, we haven't finalized that yet, but I just wanna kind of give you a little visual tour of what it, it's gonna look like. So that way it's kind of inviting from Old Cutler Road. Some of the lawn area there that you see, a lot of it's for, for public gathering as well. So with that, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stop here and just kind of see if there's any questions regarding that. I, I see uh, Rod giving me the signal here. So it's either the peace sign or you have two questions. Two questions. Okay, go for it. They're similar. So uh, Dan asks, are they developing the area in front of the new Publix? It looks like it's being clear of landscaping. And okay, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead. so I go back to PowerPoint real quick. And that one, that was a good question. Now I want to go back to PowerPoint. I think it's easier for me to show. Okay, the area that that is question. See the area there? Just I'm gonna picture right there, just north of there. It says out parcel. That's about a three acre art parcel that's there. We did not purchase that property as part of our purchase process. But what we did do is from the from the property owner, it happened to be the same property owner, 16 acres, we said that if they bring in what's called a sit-down restaurant, that developer will be able to use some of the spaces in our parking garage as an incentive. So I think what the response, the question is that is it being cleared? Yes, it's being cleared because the grass was like 13 feet tall and they were mowing it before they received the fine. That's what they were doing, you know? And then our job has been, and I know that the mayor and I have met with several, you know, restaurant years, as I call it, you know, and, and, and chains to try to recruit, you know, someone there. That will come, you know, the Publix is built, the buildings are there. There's going to be two other buildings that are missing in Publix that are going to be built within the next years. But just by some of the feedback that we received from some of the uh, restaurants, you know, we're drawing their attention with, with this project here. So that's going to be, it's going to be developed. It's, I see there's an out parcel, but it's going to be there for, for commercial restaurant. Last question is from Daniel. Any idea on what retailers will occupy vacant spaces in the new public shopping center? Okay, so that's another popular question we received. So there's two buildings along that are there sitting on public property that are owned by Publix. There's one along Oak Holler Road, and there's one that runs, you know, east and west adjacent to the town, to our town property. Uh, right now, those stores are vacant. I know there's a lot of interest in there, and and the Publix real estate office is, is working on that because I know we get a lot of inquiries there all the time, and and I think you'll see some good activity here pretty soon. You know, just by the calls that we have been receiving in our zoning department. So again, those two buildings, very important note, when the town council approved the site plan, they, they label those as restaurant retail. Restaurant retail. I heard rumors about an auto zone. I said, unless they're selling hot dogs, restaurant or retail. You know, so, so we hear that. And then there's two other buildings you see there are two empty lots there. Um, those buildings will need to be built within the next two years once we provide the final certificate, obviously, for public. So those two buildings will be bank restaurant, bank and restaurant. So again, you know, we've been hearing a lot of rumors. Uh, everybody hears rumors, you know, so I always tell people, if you hear it, call me. You know, I love being the rumor killer, you know, so so that's something that we're working uh, near and dear with with the public folks as well. No more questions? Great. Well, are there any questions from the audience? Come on up. Um, okay, I totally agree with buying up the, the, the oh property in these cases so we don't have apartments. Apartments are just ridiculous what's going on right now. Here's the problem that I had. Um, when I first moved here, it was unincorporated. And they, they had voted to incorporate, but it hasn't been incorporated yet. Those were all zoned single family homes. You guys upzoned them to these to make so you got the council actually upzoned it. To make apartments, then now we're buying it back at some inflated price. Um, who, who's made, who's who's winning here? Yeah, who's making the money? Okay, no, is it okay? So, listen, great question. We're upzoning when we did the Cutler Ridge Charette before we were incorporated. A lot of the folks that are there, I see the pictures, are still in town. 
and they were the ones that recommended between the two traffic circles. So let's talk about that journey of Old Color Road and Old Color Road Charette. The vision of Old Color Road Charette was having a commercial district with mixed use along the two traffic circles that were envisioned back then and are now constructed Old Color on 87th Avenue and as well as 97th Avenue. Part of that charrette process was to create a city place, city center, like a different commercial district instead of US-1. So that's where that's where that, that you call it upzoning has come from with, with that vision from the community before we were a municipality. And we kind of adopted that as well as what's called the Cutler Ridge charrette, which included this, the Southland Mall area as well. That's the vision that's what happened on with, with South Place City Center where all the different units. So um, it was upzoned public hearings, charrette, community-based, and here's where we are. And I think we've been very, very transparent saying, look, here's the option. The developer could build up to 109 units, has a right, or do we have an opportunity to go after it? Again, the most important part here is to understand that owner had to be a willing owner. For years, he wasn't. Now he was. So that took a lot of, a lot of uh, I call it sweat equity, as I call it, you know? there so again that's what that is in terms of in terms of reality now i'll i'll come back on a little bit about the comment when before we on before we were incorporated as a town well look at the areas south of us that are not incorporated and what's happening there at least here you have five individuals that live in town that control that that they control that type of zoning there as well but knowing that we know that we can't take away property individual property rights as well I know it was a long question, but again, I go back to the foundation. Charette, community vision, implementation. Here we are. Take it away. That's as short as I could get. That's the journey. And then the rest, we just kind of like almost fill in the blanks there. So no, but I, I understand. I understand. But again, our, our I think it's, it's, uh, um, very, uh, I, I like the word amazing, right? But amazing that we were able to secure those properties there. As, as the mayor has mentioned publicly before, guys, they're not making any more lands, you know? So what do we do here? We're gonna talk about a generation. So you're absolutely right. I think, you know, when we cut the ribbon at the park on 87th Avenue, Color Road, people would say, wow, how we get to this journey? And same thing with the 16 acres. Imagine 16 acres, 468 units there as well. So, all right. Any other questions from the audience? No, yes, sir. All right. Hey, we got another, you know, I'm here at 730. Is there going to be a charge to park for town residents on the parking lot on the new city hall? So the question is, is it going to be a charge to park at the parking lot, the new town hall complex? We haven't decided that yet. You know, we haven't decided that yet. I mean, but I could tell you as, as, as your town manager, I'm not going to sit there and try to collect a dollar when it costs me three. You know, again, but we haven't had that discussion as as administration with the town council. You know, my 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 vision, my vision would be obviously people would like to park in a secure place, right? You know, so you have you need to have security, but at the same time, you know, um, we want to make sure that you know it doesn't become like a parking authority if that makes sense. You know, but we haven't we haven't got to that point yet. Uh, we're just happy that we were able to secure uh, the location again, the park garage, only three stories. The police department and town hall will be two stories. The community center will be one story. I forgot to mention that as well. And, and the pool will be a 25 by 25 by two. 25 meters by 25 meters by two foot depth. With a little, I call it a little kitty area. Learn how to swim uh, section of the pool as well. So that's something that we take near and dear to our heart with our, with our aquatic folks that are all certified to what's called the water safety instructors. Okay. No more questions. All right. Any other questions from the audience? Huh? Any new businesses? Okay. So, okay. So, any new business? So, sure. Um, we know that we'll talk a little about the mall, right? The mall, it's over 4,000 units. There's going to be a 60,000 square foot medical arts building, maybe hospital. There's going to be a grocer as well. And there's going to be several entertainment uh, restaurants and entertainment district within the mall. So that's where you're going to see a lot of the density there, right? But also on Old Cutler, there are all those different shops that are along Publix. We have that R parcel next to um, uh, Town Hall. But yes, I mean, I think 
what happens is I know there's a lot of deals that are working in the background, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes they won't tell government until the deal is done for confidentiality agreements, right? And because if not, hey, did you hear somebody's coming? Wait, but they're moving out of my place, you know? So I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of buzz in the community. How about that? I mean, if, if you've seen our journey, we actually hosted the Miami Real Estate Association here in the town. And we brought right into their PowerPoint presentation, like, oh my God, this is great, this is great. So, so, so we hear that, we hear that buzz. And I think now, as your town manager, especially with the public site there with the new buildings, we could sit there and point at something. Before I was like, feel the dreams, right? There's a something's gonna be there, you know. So I think a lot of it's gonna depend on how quickly we can start, you know, the groundbreaking and the construction of our. 37 million dollar plus right legacy park because that's going to create that buzz as well so in terms of developments uh if you live in the lakes by the bay community there is a another 16 acre parcel there that's on the lake uh the town council approved a mixed use development there it's going to have retail restaurant and a medical arts building flanked that's going to be in the front of 216 and on the back side is going to be about 170 six units, I call them little bungalows, as I call it, for uh, um, 55 and over community. So that's a project that's happening now, that's been approved. Uh, another one that's been approved right behind the Shell station on US-1 and 184. There's a little sliver of property there between the Shell station and the busway. There's gonna be a 99 unit senior living facility spoke to the owner there as well. And then while we're on that same corridor, uh, rooms to go, we, the town council approved an expansion to that empty lot next to city furniture. So, so you'll see that there uh, occurring. Um, the call center, as I call it, you know, where the old Payless shoe store was there and the call center across from West Marine, that's approximately like 10 acres. Uh, the town council approved a mixed use development because that one is right on the transit way between the transit way and US-1. Uh, 770 units uh, uh, zoned for that. It's 75 units per acre. Remember I talked about, I mean, I talked about the, Oak, the US-1 Charette, you know, where, we, where that area was there. So it's uh, that many units there, but there it's adjacent to uh, the bus rapid transit station on Marlin Road as well. So we're also working with the mall on uh, and our state and federal partners for a possible pedestrian bridge over US-1, uh, again, to feed the BRT, but also to have people come in and out of the South, South Place City Center as well. So those are some of the major ones that, that, that the town council has approved, besides maybe some other little pocket ones along with color with some single family homes. So I think those projects there, um, they have to be, you know, lead certified. Um, and there's going to be a lot of public amenities there as well, based on our codes that we have uh, adopted in the last couple of years as well. So any other questions? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we received an email um, from a resident. What is the town's stance on allowing accessory dwelling units? Okay, so accessory dwelling units don't call me efficiencies, right? Okay, so uh, uh, Miami-Dade County passed an ordinance that allows them in Miami-Dade County, not in the municipalities. So, so if you see one, know of one, let us know. We have our code compliance, but again, our code compliance officers also have limited authority, right? We just can't go to the front door and kick down the door so let me see this efficiency, right? So there has to be what's called in our code, what's called prima facie evidence, right? I mean, believe it or not, guys, sometimes people do have two mailboxes. That's enough evidence. You know, so we so we see that. Um, we also see the new phenomena of uh, travel trailers, right? I mean, I think the going rents like maybe fourteen hundred bucks. What I hear, you know, uh, I could tell you stories from from my perch. I could show you pictures of people that are creative that will get a crane and put it over the house. So we have two of those. I mean, can't make this up, guys. I can't, you know. And how do you get that out, right? I mean, the crane over. It's now, hey, guess what? You got to pay the crane to come back. All right, so we've seen that. Um, our code does allow for the trailer to be on the, in the back rear yard. It can be connected to electricity. It cannot be connected to water and sewer, okay? So it cannot be connected to water and sewer. So um, if you see one of those, you know, I mean, again, our code compliance officers are, are out there. We have uh, 
three code compliance officer. We just added a fourth. Uh, the, the individual works, the fourth one works on nights and weekends. And I love getting these calls. Well, what's your guy doing on the weekend? I'm following you. Following the, 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 the cement truck. I mean, I, I, I hear the stories, you know, I hear the stories. And we have over 740 active cases. So I always tell folks, give me an address, I'll give you a story. Okay, we have 742 active cases. In fact, just today, we issued a, uh, our town attorney worked aggressively to go through the circuit court to issue a court order to force someone to clean it. Because through our special master, it was just accumulating fines, accumulating fines, and accumulating fines. If you follow our, our council meetings, uh, Vice Mayor Callahan is sponsoring a new ordinance that's gonna make it even more stringent in terms of like say lien reductions or fine reductions. So uh, you, you'll see that coming up here in the next you know, couple months. So if you can follow us, but, but yes, there are 742 cases. Uh, I know, cause I get the calls. And if you're one of those folks, you think there's too much enforcement, you know? But again, our goal is to protect the neighbors and the, and the neighbors rights and properties as well. So I hear the bell, so Rod. Yeah, question from Daniel. How will Miami-Dade Police Department change into a sheriff's office affect our town? Okay, so great question. The question was, how would the, the electing a new sheriff change the, the police services within the town of Color Bay? I would say within the town of Color Bay, within the town of Palmetto Bay, with the, and the with village of Palmetto Bay, and the town of Miami Lake. So the three cities that have a sheriff. We have been working closely with uh, our county commissioners and Mayor Kava's office, as well as the three cities and the city managers to extend our contract uh, for another five years with the sheriff's department, whoever that sheriff may be, in order to maintain our level of service. Uh, just a little quick trivia, out of the three cities, Cutler Bay, Palmetto Bay, Miami Lakes, we're the biggest customer. You know, we have over 55 officers, we have 10 square miles, we have 45,000 residents. So, so obviously we're working closely with uh, Commissioner Cohen Higgins, Commissioner McGee, uh, which those two are our commissioners and coincidentally Commissioner uh, Cohen Higgins also represents Palmetto Bay. And we're also working closely, again, this is part of having friends in the county commissioner with Senator, Senator Rene Garcia, who's a county commissioner as well that represents the town of Miami Lakes. So we're moving forward here in the next, you'll see in the next three months here uh, with an addendum to our agreement to extend it out you know, five more years. So uh, we have received information and confirmation that there's not going to be interruption in service, even if those agreements that still have not passed because they have an obligation, they, the county, to provide police services to the town. But that's, that's a great question. No more questions. Okay. And then I think another issue there is also um, part of our police agreement, they also provide services for our school crossing guards as well. You know, so that's part of the police services as well. And some of the cities, believe it or not, is something that we're looking at uh, have explored kind of contracting out to a private provider versus Miami-Dade County. So that's another thing that we're looking at possible, you know, cost savings there as well, because we do have a lot of school crossing guards and, and intersections are very uh, um, busy there with, with pedestrian traffic. Good questions? No questions? Okay, great. Any other questions from the audience? I want, oh, come on up, come on up. So, so the, for the folks at home, the question was that there's a lot of these uh, deficiencies, right? Additional dwelling units that are advertised on Facebook, and I mean, let's let's talk about it. Let's even put the the court board at Publix, right? You know, hey, here's a room rental, or through the real estate offices, right? Um, I'll need to review that with, in terms of code. I don't know. The, I don't know if that. It, it, again, you may be correct. I don't know off the top of my head in terms of this, if that's enough prima face evidence to to provide a a warning or ticket or allow us to get into the house. I Okay, if it says so in our code, then as, as you see those, then let us know. I mean, uh, um, our code compliance officers, as I mentioned, there's four of them, 742 cases. So you can imagine how much they're juggling every day because I get the same thing about Airbnb that we, that we also you know, try to, to enforce as well. The Airbnb has to be registered with the town. 
town, we say that you can only have X number of folks. So it's always a little, I call it a little cat and mouse game that somebody advertised that there's, you can have up to 12 people when our, when the permit only says eight, I'm using that for example, but um, we'll certainly look into the ones that are advertised as pre and face evidence there and, and start the, start the warning. Well, that's, <laughs> and start and start the, the warning process there and be being more and more aggressive. In fact, there's, there was one case there that the tenant had a dispute with the owner and the tenant actually let us in. So yeah, come take a picture of everything. I'm out of here. So that was enough for us to get in. So again, that's something that, that if there's the, if it's in our code, we'll, we'll, we'll start addressing that. And if you're one of those folks, we're coming. Good. That was just a cricket thing. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, again, we have another eight minutes. Hey, come on up, man, because you know I can't sing, like I said in the beginning. Come on up, man. Come on up. You got eight minutes. How many police officers are on or driving around on patrol? Let's say on Friday. Okay. That's it. Ah, that's easy. No, no oh, you gonna follow? Okay, so so I could tell you that we have anywhere. So our our police major, Major Rosselli, has has instituted what we call a a four ten shift. Okay, that that he has created like a lot of overlap during the busy times. So, so I would say the skinny shifts, right, is about six, and I call it the overlapping shift could be as many as eight or nine. There. Okay. So now Friday night, I don't know. I have to schedule the top of my head. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't look at that. Here's a problem. You have the Saga Lounge, where it's called Sandbar, and the Seven Eleven across the street. I counted four, five, six officers sit there for hours and hours. And, and they tell me that they're guarding the Saga Lounge because when the fights break out, they're right there, they can break it up fast. So should the Saga Lounge be permitted? Should they be paying us back for that? Okay, so thank you, Kevin, for that question. I know that you personally spoke to my police major regarding that because I was, I was the next day got briefed by him. But I just, I just want to make sure. Okay, so yeah, okay, so so that's the kind of service that we have, and that's a great question, Kevin, because as soon as you brought that up to my attention, the next call you got from my police major, Major Rosselli, because I know, got it, got it. So that's the type of level of service that we like to provide, and and again, um, I think that one. Um, you know what those folks are doing they're sitting there at the oh the 7-eleven you know i um i'm sure they had their justification but i could tell you that we're not providing free you know public safety service to any any business community that we have there uh you also mentioned there's been less so there's been some corrective action there but i know that huh yeah there has been less but and also you know there also has been, you know, we, we work with, with that particular business and there's been, been modifications to their programs, which now have, have we've had less incidents there as well. So that area has kind of been a, a little bit safer. But if I'm on that old color road corridor, it's not, it's not it, I would expect officers, you know, and that's particularly in some of the busy areas there, you know, if they need to go and sit and, and sit in their car and do a report, do a report, it's high visibility items there too. But at the same time, we're not giving away free off-duty officers as well. So so I think that we've addressed that issue, you know, with you, my, my police major has, and I'm glad to hear that there's been some improvements because I have that photograph memory. I'm going to ask him tomorrow tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm sure he's watching now. What? No. Appreciate it. You know what? And knock on wood, there hasn't been any major incidents there. So, you know, that's a tribute to the business, as well as our police department working with the business uh, uh, there that you identified about, you know, changing some of their different programs there. So, so I'm glad that's there. Okay. Any other questions? No, no questions. Great. Well, look, I don't want to try to cheat everybody, but we have your five minutes till. I want to make sure, you know, nobody else walks in. And again, this uh, video is going to be posted on our social media website, um, and we we made notes throughout the process about some of the different topics that we that we uh, heard and the comments. They're all good, great comments, um, and we're going to start pursuing some of those. And that's what I like about these type of interactive features. But at the same time, don't have to wait for open mic night. You know, all you have to do is you know pick up the phone, call us. You know, it goes right to either Maria or Deborah in the front desk. It goes to my executive assistant, Julia, and I pick up the phone. I could tell you, I I love when I when I call back residents. Well, I wasn't expecting a call from you. Well, you call the town manager, you know, so that's that's what I do. You know, so again, you know, good, bad, or ugly, we want to hear that because that's how we're going to do the corrective actions. And again, this is a tribute. Our success, not only what mayor and council do here, myself, is all of our employees 
from the front desk clerks to our part-time life youth programmers to our park service aides that are out there right now working until 11 o'clock at night securing our parks as well. So it's a big team effort that we have here. We continue to be a, a lean and mean staff. We only have 33 full time with part timers worth about 54. And you'll see a lot of change, particularly in our parks department. When you look at our budget, you know, we're, we're putting the resources where we need to in terms of that. Some of the things that we're doing in our parks department is before we would have like say one individual kind of roaming like six parks. Now we have individuals assigned to a park. So that way when there's an issue, we know it's Bob, Joe, or Jane that are in that park. So you'll see that there as well as our, our uh, numerous lifeguards. And we always have those type of positions open. So if you know anybody, friends and family, get onto our website. We're always looking for those type of, uh, of frontline positions. And we always love to hire, you know, local residents as well. So we're trying to create a great pipeline with our friends from South Ridge, with Principal Moret, as well as our, our friends from Cutler Bay High, with Principal De La Torre, to have those folks come in. Hey, you know what? You're going to want to get your first job somewhere. Let it be a lifeguard or, or park service aide and grow up to be a town manager. So, you know, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Um, and again, if there's any questions, please feel free to give us a call. If you, if, if you think about something later at night, shoot us an email. And, you know, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Take care.